Welcome to Chapter 4 on Credibility, or Knowing How to Respond to a Claim. It's important to know how to respond to a claim, because arguments are made up of claims. In order to accept the conclusion of an argument, we must be able to accept the premises of the argument. There are two issues that a critical thinker is generally worried about when it comes to credibility. The first is, how believable is the claim? In other words, does the claim have initial plausibility? Secondly, we might be worried about how credible the source of the claim is. In other words, does the source have objectivity and the necessary expertise to be making the claim? Generally speaking, we're not always equally concerned with both. We might be more concerned, for example, with the credibility of a source than we are immediately concerned with the plausibility of the claim. In other instances, we might be more concerned with the plausibility of the claim rather than the credibility of the source. For example, if I say, it is raining outside right now, are you concerned with whether or not I am a meteorologist who has the necessary expertise to know whether it is raining outside? Or are you more concerned with the believability or plausibility of the claim itself? Are you just simply concerned with whether or not it is true that it is raining outside? In this case, you're probably just wanting to know if it's true that it is raining. You're probably not terribly worried about whether or not I am a meteorologist. There are three ways that a critical thinker can respond to a claim. The first is to accept the claim. In accepting the claim, the critical thinker believes that the claim is true. Alternatively, we can reject a claim. In rejecting the claim, the critical thinker believes that the claim is false. But sometimes, we do not have enough information to either accept or reject the claim. In such instances, we can suspend judgment. In suspending judgment, the critical thinker does not think that the claim is true. Nor does the critical thinker think the claim is false. Instead, the critical thinker does not have the necessary information and says, I don't know. This is a great opportunity for the thinker to do more research in order to be able to arrive at either accepting or rejecting the claim. Which way we respond to the claim depends on the claim's plausibility. Plausibility simply refers to the extent to which the claim is believable. Let's take these three claims. The teacher owns a duck, the teacher owns a dump truck, or the teacher owns a hippopotamus. Which of these three claims lacks plausibility? If you said the last one, the teacher owns a hippopotamus, then you're probably in agreement with most other people. It seems hard to believe that the teacher owns a hippopotamus. The question is, why is it hard to believe that the teacher owns a hippopotamus? Well, that claim brings many questions to mind. This is a huge creature. How on earth did she end up with such a large beast? Where does she keep the thing? Does she have a giant pool in her backyard? Does she live on the savanna where she can let the hippopotamus roam? That hippopotamus looks a little scary to me. Is it even safe for anyone to own a hippopotamus? Is it legal? Why on earth did she decide to get one? These are all concerns that make it hard to believe that the teacher owns a hippopotamus. In other words, the claim that the teacher owns a hippopotamus conflicts with our background knowledge. Your background knowledge is one of the most useful tools you have to be able to evaluate the plausibility of claims. Your background knowledge is basically everything contained in your mind, everything that you've learned in the past, and the cumulative ideas 
that you've acquired through your observations. Your background knowledge is vast. However, it is not perfect. Your background knowledge is only as good as your memory and as the truth of the ideas and the credibility of the sources of those ideas. However, when it comes to whether or not the teacher owns a hippopotamus, you can probably consider your background knowledge fairly reliable. Claims with less initial plausibility require more evidence. For example, let's take the claim, this jockey is riding a dolphin. That seems a pretty unbelievable claim. We would certainly need more evidence for this, other than just this photoshopped image. If it were a more common claim, such as, this jockey is riding a horse, we probably wouldn't need a ton of evidence. So, the wackier the claim, the more evidence we need to support it. Let's move on now to credibility of sources. We can worry about a source's credibility in two different ways. First, we can have concerns about the source's knowledge or expertise. Secondly, we can have concerns about the source's truthfulness, objectivity, and reliability. Even if you don't think a source is flat out lying to you, does that mean that the source should automatically be believed? Of course not. Even a truthful source can simply be mistaken or have some sort of bias, such as a political, a religious, a cultural, or even an age bias. And lastly, the source can lack expertise. In this case, the source simply lacks the required education or information to be able to be trusted as a good source of information. The best indicators of a source's expertise are education and experience. Sometimes we might be more concerned with one than with the other. For example, you're about to have brain surgery. Are you going to choose the person who's been operating on brains for 10 days or the person who's been operating on brains for 10 years? Let's assume each of these people has equal level of education. In that case, you're going to consider experience to be important. You'll probably choose the person who's been operating on brains for 10 years, not 10 days. However, let's add something to the dilemma. Let's say the person who's been operating on brains for 10 years has been doing so out of his basement in his house. Do you still want to have brain surgery with this guy? He has more experience, 10 years of operating on brains from his basement, yet you're probably hesitant to walk into his basement and have him slice open your skull. Why is that? Well, it's not just experience and education that we find important. We're also worried about reputation among one's peers, the position that one has in one's field, and the achievements in one's field. Presumably, the man operating on brains out of his basement does not have a good reputation, does not have a great position, such as in a reliable hospital, and lacks great achievements. Thus, he's resorting to operating on people in his basement. Another confusing issue is the extent to which expertise transfers from one field to another. For example, does being a physician and holding the important title of doctor mean that one would be a great politician? Probably not. Expertise is limited to the field in which that education and experience has been gathered. In other words, expertise does not necessarily transfer from one field to another. However, it's common to make mistakes such as looking at titles as giving authority in lots of different fields. It's a mistake to attack, attach extra authority to someone just because that person is 
a parent, or a friend, or a famous celebrity, or someone in a position of power, such as someone from the government. Let's wrap up. We can respond to a claim in three ways, accepting, rejecting, and suspending judgment. Which of these ways we respond depends on the claim's initial plausibility. Initial plausibility can be determined by our background knowledge and our direct observations. Secondly, we must assess the credibility of the sources of claims. The source of the claim should be evaluated on the basis of the person's expertise, how much knowledge, experience, and achievement that person has made in his field, and the person's objectivity. Does the person have some sort of bias? Is the person trying to fool you? We'll get into issues of objectivity a little later. But for now, good luck on the soft chalk lesson associated with this tutorial.